changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. It's Thoughtful Thursday, and it's almost Father's Day weekend. So I want to share a couple of stories with you that I absolutely love. Both stories are from our book called Chicken Soup for the Soul, Thanks, Dad, which, yes, does make a wonderful gift for a father or grandfather. These stories might make you tear up, but they are so good, and they beautifully illustrate that sometimes dads show they care in a more quiet way, not by saying, I love you, out loud. I know my dad is that way. He never says, I love you. But that totally works in my family because we all know how he feels. Many fathers show their feelings through their actions, not through specific words. I know that my father is very proud of me, and even at age 87, very eager to help me in any way possible. So here it goes, our first story about a dad showing his love in a quiet way. It's by Sally Rodman, and it's called Very Important Papers. So Sally says that education was very important to her father. His family had not been able to afford good schools or college for him, and he had actually not gotten his college degree until his employer sent him later in life. But he paid for Sally and her siblings to go to private schools, and he was very proud when Sally was accepted to USC, which is where he had gone. But Sally decided instead to elope with her boyfriend. And she finally got her college degree almost 20 years later at age 37. And she says her father was very proud when he went to her graduation. So she got that college degree and she got a very good job. And she realized that she got that job because of the wonderful education she had had. And she also realized that she had never thanked her father for all the sacrifices that he made for her. Sally sat down and wrote her father a letter. She wrote a letter because she knew she would get too emotional if she tried to tell him out loud how thankful she was. So in the letter, she thanked him for sending her to such great schools as a child and also for drilling her on math and her other homework while she was growing up. And she concluded her thank you letter by saying, I realize now how much you sacrificed to make sure I got the best education possible. I love you, Daddy, and I'm so thankful you are my dad. I hope I always make you proud. And just know I will always be your little girl. Then Sally waited to hear her father's reaction, but he didn't say a word. After a few months had passed, Sally asked her mom if her dad had ever received the note, but her mom hadn't heard a thing about it. So Sally decided to forget about it. But then years later, after her dad died, Sally and her family were cleaning out his bedroom, and they found a bunch of documents held together with a rubber band and marked, Very Important Papers. Among these documents was the title to his car, his life insurance policy, his savings account passbook, and a ragged, yellowed piece of flowered note paper. Sally's note. And Sally had her answer from her quiet, undemonstrative dad. So we meet another quietly loving dad in a story called Tools for Life by Caitlin Bailey from the same book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Thanks, Dad. Caitlin tells us that it was Christmas time, and her father had to live through two things, both of his daughters leaving the house. One had just gotten her bachelor's degree, and one had just gotten her master's degree. And to make things worse for their dad, both girls had longtime boyfriends, so their dad really felt like he was losing his girls. When the family sat down to open their presents on Christmas morning, there were two large, lumpy, exceedingly heavy matching gifts under the tree for Caitlin and her sister. Caitlin's mom was quick to give her husband credit for these, and that made Caitlin and her sister nervous. What could their father, not known for his shopping prowess, have bought for them on his own? When they opened their gifts, they found hammers, wrenches, nails, duct tape, tire gauges, tape measures, screws. Their father looked so proud. And the girls didn't get it, at least not at first. 
They were polite. They made all the right noises, of course, because their dad was so excited about this gift. Later, their mom explained to them that their dad had spent hours picking out these things. And suddenly, it became clear to the girls. Inside these clunky toolboxes were all of a father's lessons and love. He may have been handing these girls off to the next phase of their lives and those boyfriends, but he wanted them to be able to take care of themselves. And without saying any words, he told them everything that he needed to about how he felt about his girls growing up and moving on in their lives with the tools to take with them. Okay, we have one more day of Father's Day episodes to go. Tomorrow is Friend Friday, and my guest will be Kara Sundlin, and she has an amazing story about how she figured out as a teenager that her father was the governor of Rhode Island. It's the story of a strong teenager, a stubborn man, and a whole lot of love and forgiveness. I'm Amy Newmark. Thank you for listening to the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast today. I hope you're getting a kick out of our stories this week. If you'd like to learn more about the book I mentioned today, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Thanks Dad, then go to our website, chickensoup.com. And if you want to hear more about upcoming books and what's going on at Chicken Soup for the Soul and receive a daily link to this podcast, follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Amy Newmark.